Good morning. Okay, right. After a lot of people have said that the chain looks atrocious, I'm here at our local car wash. I'm going to give the Bonneville a hose down and then I'm going to clean everything, clean the chain up, make everything look like it's brand new again. And after a lot of people said, Freddie, you need to get a trickle charger. I think it's called a trickle charger. So this is a battery charger, but the different thing about this charger and my normal charger is that, and this is from, this is ProWorks and you get that from XL Moto. I'll include a link in the description because this at the moment, hugely discounted. So it's a very, very good time to buy this. Right, okay. This just plugs into the wall. It's got this adapter on the end and this, this plugs in or this hooks up to my battery and I'll hide this bit under the side panel here. So if I ever need to charge my battery, I don't need to take the battery out. I just plug this into that. Save a huge amount of hassle, especially if you live in a house and you've got easy access to mains. That's a game changer for battery health. Okay, I'll do that first and then give it a spray down. WD-40 everywhere. Remember what this looks like because this is about to look showroom fresh in 10 minutes time. This is an aftermarket rear light on the bike. And honestly, I've always had trouble with this. Have a look at this. So ignition on. Uh, sometimes it seems to work. That's fine. And that's fine. But this bit just seems to go on and off. And it, it constantly flickers. So I'm tempted, well, I'm tempted to actually buy an original rear light cluster and actually put the original Bonneville one back on there. I've been thinking about it for a few months now because this is just constantly flickering. Some LEDs work, some don't. So uh, I may put it back to standard. I'm also considering, I can't believe this, I, I threw them in the bin. When I put these black wing mirrors on, these black uh, mirrors on the bike, I threw my original chrome ones in the bin. And you could say, Freddie, why the hell would you do that? I don't know. I don't know. I just get impulsive and think, right, that's it. The bike's now modified. I don't want it back the way it was. And now I kind of miss those big chrome mirrors. And I'm tempted to put chrome mirrors back on the original Triumph ones again. They're going to cost me about 70 quid. And I just threw them in the bin last time. And of course, this as well, when I took it off, threw it in the bin. I'm just buying stuff back that I binned about a year ago or something like that. <sighs> Got to learn my lesson. Right, here we go. Okay, this is going to go on the battery, get hidden under here, like that. That can then get hidden there. Put that on top as normal. And then every time I need to just trickle charge it, keep the battery healthy, just unscrew that. That's there, pull that out and just plug it in so you don't need to take the battery off. And this is what Kalima does the Saharan dust, it's just, it gets everywhere on the bike. Look at that. Cape covering the whole bike. I was just on WhatsApp with a few of my biking friends today, completely coincidentally, and one of them said, just tried to start up my Triumph Street, Street Triple and the battery's completely dead. And another of my friends said, I find it inexplicable how some people can let their batteries die over the winter. All you need to do is attach a trickle charger and leave it on charge at home. Obviously it's easier if you've got a house. This, this is what you need to be able to simply protect your battery without having to go through the half of the faff of taking off your battery every time. So, okay, so positive and positive, negative on negative, that's hooked up. And now just, it's as easy as that. Just plug that into there and you've got a trickle charger to protect your battery. Obviously, if you live in a flat, it's more tricky, but we've actually got a power outlet next to our parking space here, so we should be fine with that. But flat living, yeah, it does make it harder.
They take good care of their cars here. It's about 11 a.m. Tuesday the 8th of February. This place has been full constantly since we got here about 20 minutes ago. It's also 26 degrees now. It is properly hot. Okay, so the essentials. Is it ridiculous wearing, wearing yellow gloves? Chain, come around here because the chain was filthy. I know a lot of people don't like using a jet wash because they says it damages the bike, but for me, I like using it just on the bottom half because here on the chain, it cleans away a huge amount of grime. See there, you can actually see the bare metal again. And that was all just thick black before. So it's got rid of most of the grime. Now, I shall WD-40 over the whole bike. Five minutes will be done here. I've always done this, ever since I've had bikes for about the past 11 years or so, I've always, because I ride through the winter, put WD-40 on, in theory, once, once every two or three weeks or something, because I find it's amazing at cleaning the bike. It gives the bike a good shine, and I think it pretty much 100% stops any rust. I never have rust on any of the bikes, even riding in the, the snowy and icy conditions in the UK. I think it's amazing. So I spray it over the whole bike, including underneath it, straight from the front every nook and cranny i spray a whole load of wd-40 probably about a third of a tub or a tube and for me it's magic cleans the bike looks after all of the parts and stops any rust and then and also for anyone living in a flat like me you know you don't always need to jet wash it it means that you don't need a water supply you can literally just use the WD-40 without having to have a hose or anything like that. So for any people living in a flat, it's also amazing. The problem with cleaning your bike somewhere away from home is I couldn't bring my bike lift, which I usually have, crank up the bike and then it's so easy to clean the chain and oil it. But because I don't have it, I just have to do it bit by bit. But look at how good this is. Just an old cloth and the chain, in fact, look, that's the job, just spraying it does, which is brilliant. And then just give it a good firm wipe down with this and it, it cleans off so easily. Look at that. Looks like a new chain, doesn't it? But look at the amount of grime that comes off. And it's amazing. You can actually get the chain literally looking like new again. And that's how it was before. Love that. It's actually really satisfying cleaning the chain. And now the final bit. Chain loop. And that's it. Back a showroom fresh condition i only clean my bike about once a month oh god i love it every time i do it it's so rewarding you can get a bike that looks atrocious looking really nice again and the chain literally looks like brand new okay monica you you deserve it should we go for a coffee I'm 
Just, we're probably about 10 minutes from the coast here, right up in the hills. And if you're looking for the hardest thing for us in Tenerife, trying to get green vegetables, it's almost impossible from a lot of the supermarkets. And it's probably three times the price of the UK. But here, if you come to these little fruiterias, it's good value. They've got the best choice. And you can get lemonade there. You can chill out. It's just got a great vibe. I love it. Shall I give a little tour? Yes. I'll do a fruiteria tour. Right, so fruits, veggies over in the corner there, a few more veggies there, and the biggest, I've got no idea what that is, but that is the biggest looking vegetable I've ever seen in my life. This is probably the best fruiteria we found out. She'd been to a few of them, and this one for choice, value, it's the best. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Shopping done. Shall we see if the lemonade guy accepts card? Yes. Yeah, let's get one. Do you want one? Do you take card? Yeah, of yeah. course. Perfect. So they actually make the lemonade from scratch. Oh, it's a handmade. Yeah, handmade lemonade with one of these lemons, some of that mint, I think, all freshly made. Perfect. Just that you can ever get. Where are they from? Literally right near here? The river right here. Yeah. We have more than one plantation. One of us in here, but we have more up north oh, and seriously? around the island. But most of the things you can buy here is yeah. from our plantation, our friends. Oh, so wow. Most of the stuff in here is Canarias. How long have you been doing this for? One year, four months. Brilliant. Happy with it? Yeah. Brilliant. Can't, can't complain. Look around. Yeah, Look I know. Around. Look around. It's heaven, isn't it? You go there, you can see Teide on the left and Montagna Blanca. Oh, brilliant. Yes, over there, when you go drink the lemonade, yeah. take a look. Right? Yeah. Look left, Teide and Montagna Blanca. Beautiful. Amazing, amazing. Can I give you a little cane sugar? That's the yeah, best please sugar do. I can find here. Please do. It's not gonna, I mean, it is sweetening up the lemonade, but it, the lemonade is not gonna be sweet. It's yeah. still gonna be sour. Yeah. Because it's a lot of lemon, but it gives a little body and it's a little sweet, right? Brilliant. But the most important here for the health, is the freshly grated ginger. I do it myself. Here I have everything. That's the bomb of vitamin, antioxidant. It's very healthy for us. Amazing. Then Amazing. I top it with water. Woo, we try at least <laughs> with this wind today. That should be good. And then the yerba buena, which we've been talking about. This is the local mint. We'll take some more from here. Why not? We can use that. And then I'll give you some more lemon, so you won't forget what you're drinking. <laughs> mm. And just a dash of brown sugar on top. It's just for the fun, for the stride. It doesn't give you any sweet taste. And then I'll give you one green and one blue. Amazing. Oh, thank thank you, you so right. much. Thank, thank you. you. Oh, that's pure health. Mm. You know what that is? That is the healthiest tasting lemonade that I've ever had in my life. It actually tastes healthy. And he said, go and take a seat over here. I don't know if you could hear it, but there's a view of Tady over there, right in the distance. You can just see Tady. So I've got my lemonade, deck chair, and a view of Tady. This tuk-tuk driving around a few times and 
I think what they do is they give guided tours. Monica, did your mum actually go in this? Yes, she did, yes. She did, didn't she? Yeah. So Monica's mum and I think a few of her friends were, were carted around in this, I think, just a couple of years ago. So you can rent it out. He will give you a guided tour of, well, probably you can't get too far because it's on a battery, but he'll give you a guided tour of the tourist areas of Tenerife. Yeah, and he'll take you here. Yeah, and of course, and he'll take you here for a lemonade. Yeah. This is a, a big reason why I really, really like Tenerife because it's, it's just so multicultural. You know, you can go to a coffee shop or a restaurant and it could be British or Scandinavian or Lithuanian. Then you come to a guy here, a Polish guy serving lemonade. You just get every single nationality coming to Tenerife and setting up their own little businesses. It's, it's so interesting being here because you really do get people from, I mean, all over the world, but all over Europe, certainly just setting up their own little businesses and making new lives here. Shall I pinch it off you, Monica? Yes. I'll show the view. So, just right in the distance there, that is Tay Day, right in the distance. And the whole top that you can see there was covered in snow about one week ago. Now the snow's receded all the way to the top, but that is Tay Day. And then this is, this is the reality of what a lot of more inland Tenerife's like. So you get these old, I'll zoom out a bit, these old buildings a lot of the time they're abandoned and just newer ones are built but i think these are all in use actually so there i think you've got i think that's actually an artist studio just on the left hand side you've got an area there for i think horses or pigs or something like that all all of the herbs growing there then you've got these actually quite nice looking rustic old buildings here Am I pushing it saying it's quite nice looking? I don't know, but there, and then here we've got, we've got the cows over there, but this area here, I hope the camera can pick it up as far as I can see, is agricultural. It's all farming, it's all different things growing, and of course over there, bananas. I was wondering what the cows actually ate and then the owner of the lemonade stall over there, he came over to me and he said, obviously because there's no grass here in Tenerife, I think that gets in the view because there's no grass here in Tenerife the cows actually eat the leaves off the banana trees so the farmers cut the leaves off the top of the banana trees to get as much sun to the bananas as possible and usually they just throw away the leaves but instead of throwing them away they actually give them to the cows to eat so that's why there's a huge pile of banana leaves with that man there picking up the leaves and chucking them into the cows enclosure This is where all of the stuff at that fruiteria is actually grown, 90% actually right here in Tenerife and predominantly around the fruiteria. And what's not grown in Tenerife is the final few, five or 10% is still Spanish. You can see all of it here. Look, they're actually growing all of the herbs right here or whatever there. So herbs and stuff growing there, bananas over there. I think they're, I don't, oh, they're strawberries, I think. I think there's strawberries but everything's growing here and it is right up into the hills so this fruiteria here that's serving everything it's getting all of its stuff so locally cool little place and it's so tucked away you'd never know it exists monica can i just quickly demonstrate something i'm so proud of the chain i had to show you how good it looks it literally looks okay maybe i'm pushing it a bit but it looks like it's it's straight out of the packet again can't believe it actually looks so gold. And I'll give it to you, Monica, so I can. Should we wrap it up? Yes, let's do it. We'll wrap you up with this. Okay, I'll move away from there for this setting. Let's wrap it up here. Thank you so much, everyone, for coming along with us on today's video. Please do give the video a like, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you in the next one.